double plays. Walks it and shoots, he scores! I'm your host, Stoyan. Beautiful Friday afternoon. I want to thank all of our Facebook listeners for tuning in. Do leave us a comment as we have a really, really exciting to, uh, show today. On the show, we're going to have two guests. Our first guest is former NFLer and CFLer, and now he's assistant head coach with the Calgary Colts. We're going to have on Tim Kearse just in a little bit. And in the second half hour of the show, we're going to have back our hockey analyst, Miko, we're going to talk all about the Leafs, the last two games. Their winners are actually 7-1-1 one one in the last nine games. So if you're a Leaf fan, you must be just super excited. But we are super excited because on the line, again, we have assistant head coach, Tim Kearse. Tim, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Jay, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. We really appreciate it. Now, we understand you're calling from Calgary Colts. And along with being assistant head coach for the Calgary uh, Colts, you're also a special needs instructor. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because that's really our focus, and we're really excited to talk to you about that. Absolutely. I'm excited to talk about it myself, Jay. Uh, yes, I, I in between the times of doing uh, things with football and when I went to university at San Jose State, uh, I had a major of, majored in administration of justice. My concentration was on the youth side of things. And uh, with that background and being said, and being born and raised in York, Pennsylvania, in low-income housing and in a project environment, uh, I think that's what gave me my niche to want to be able to do social work and be able to be able to reach youth. You know, uh, I think at my time period of growing up, there was a lot of people that were around me, uncles and cousins and and older brothers and things that would kept me on the right track. And uh, I think taking in that field of work. And now that's just lends itself into doing things and working with special needs kids and working with the, the developmental and disability uh, youth. That's great, Tim. So can you tell us a little bit more? Like, let's delve into a little bit about actually maybe your daily activity and your, your hands-on approach with the kids and tell us a little bit exactly what you do. Absolutely. Uh, I work at a high, currently work at a high school now. It's called Cochran High School, which is about 45 minutes north say, of, of uh, Calgary, uh, going towards Canmore. Well, a lot of people are probably familiar with Canmore across the country uh, and Banff. Uh, but this program here is uh, in the Rocky View School District, and it is probably the biggest uh, special needs program or disabilities program that a high school will have. What we end up having is we have a lot of other high schools from the area, junior high schools in the Calgary area. They come to our program here at Cochrane High School and uh, – do a lot of things that we model, and they take those things from our our uh, our program, and they institute it throughout in their programming outside of their outside of our school and into their school program. That is so. I mean, it's that's very that's very wonderful to hear. Like we're we're so encouraged by having uh, uh, former athletes, for former professional athletes like yourself on the line. Or a couple of weeks ago, we had on the legendary agent Lee Steinberg, and again. It's all about giving back. So let's talk a little bit about um, the position that you're in and able to give back and maybe how you can tie that into your professional career uh, that gave you that opportunity through the NFL and CFL. Absolutely. Uh, it, it, is, it is fully wide function. Uh, we have a lot of wide range of students within our program. Uh, we have a couple of students that are nonverbal. We have a couple of ones in wheelchair. Uh, to the high end of our students that they are actually in the mainstream in the building, going to their classes, have their class, class curriculum, their schedule handy. They're able to go into their classes or five blocks a day. Those kids are fully functioning and able to do those things. My role is assisting with all ends of the students from right from the, from the bottom, from being nonverbal right up to the, to the, to the, kid or the youth that is in classes and in the mainstream. So it, it, you wear a lot of different hats. I wear a lot of different hats during the course of the day as I wear a lot of different hats throughout mm -hmm. a lot of other things they're doing with speed instruction, coaching football, uh, working with youth. I, I also do things with having the youth involved with our junior football team. As me being the assistant head coach of a football team, I'll have youth come and they can be part with helping with the equipment people. It gives them a social 
utilization base where our disabled kids and the kids that I work with in that capacity, they're able to now have a function in mainstream things, right? So we'll all have a young man at every home game of our last year. He was part of the football team, uh, and he's autistic uh, and uh, has a few other diagnoses as well, but he was able to be the water boy with the team, with the junior football team at home game. So Wonderful. just things like that, right? You know, inclusion, right? Oh, our, this school here is big on inclusion. If you would be able to be here and anyone would be able to, to visit our school, you would see that the kids that are quote unquote in the mainstream are kids walking through the hall, the kids call them by their name, uh, they're, they're going through the hall giving high fives, fist bumps, and all those sort of things. So it's great to see the connection. You know, like today here, just probably about an hour before, we had a, a uh, staff basketball game versus the, the kids in the building. And our kids are, are there. Uh, we have a, a mascot that a uh, person dresses up as. So one of our kids that are in our program actually was Kobe today. It's called Kobe the Cobra. That's our mascot's name. Cochran Cobras is the high school's name. And uh, so he was able to participate, and he was Kobe, right? So he's running around giving students high five, getting the crowd riled up and those sort of things. So things like that are, are, are parts of are things that we do during the day. Well, you sure can put a price on a smile or a hug or a laugh. Isn't that so true? Absolutely. For so, sure. So let me ask you this. I want to be a little bit of selfish here. What... What do you get out of it? How does that make you feel? Because I think it's so important that you share that with our viewers because at the end of the day, and I don't like to say that phrase, but it's all about giving back and it's all about the results. So tell us how you personally feel, Tim, about what you do. Oh, I, I, I think for myself, it's just like the day when the, the young fella came to me and said, do you have a key so that I can get to get on the Kobe outfit, right? So I can get the mascot uniform on. And just to see the his, his excitement, it, it just bubbling through his body. Like when that happens to young kids, they can't keep that stuff in. So if you feel it, if you have some feelings, and you have some feeling towards those individuals and those youth, that's the stuff that gets, puts a smile on it, warms your heart, and all those good things, right? So sometimes it's not all about the renumerization, Although we would all like to have good renumerization, uh, it does come back into play when you just see the warmth of that kid's smile. That's or a kid who's non nonverbal and see that kid now be able to make communication with you in his way. But you have to get into his world to be able to understand the communication. That's the beauty, man. That's, that's, that, that's there at the end of the day sometimes when you think back and you see how you communicated but this kid couldn't talk with you. But he's able wow. to communicate with you and let you know what he's expressing and what he'd like to accomplish. I love, I love hearing sort of that. Please do uh, extend a big thank you to your high school because I know it's a, it's a team effort. I know you're not alone. I'm sure you have lots of support around you. So I do want to thank you. Again, we're with Tim Kearse. Now, Tim was an ex-NFLer and CFLer. Congratulations on a wonderful career. I mean... Just to say that you made it to the big dance and you were there and you were playing, I know we were talking a little bit off air, you were on the same team at the same time as Eric Dickerson and then in Detroit, you, I guess, hung around or chummed around on the same team and you said he wasn't right there but Billy, Billy Sims. So, like, two iconic NFLers and just to say that, you know what, Jay, we were on the same team, we played, like, what, a, what a, an amazing accomplishment, Tim. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Dave. You know, uh, yeah, it was really huge. I mean, uh, football for myself uh, would have never happened. I mean, my mother and father would have never been able to afford to send me to university. So through sport, it was able to give me an opportunity to go to university. And uh, I was a small, small, small kid coming from a small town, York, Pennsylvania. Ended up going to junior college at San Jose State. At that point, I was recruited by Dennis Erickson, who... Mm -hmm legendary NFL NFL coach. Uh, so at that time, I mean, uh, that was just great for myself. And then the opportunities presented itself after after a three-year career at San Jose State. And that also, too, my head coach at that time was Jack Elway, who was John Elway's father huh. uh, at, at Stanford University. And our, our claim to fame at San Jose is uh, the three years that we played against Stanford, 
we were able to beat those guys two out of three years. And even one year, I was able to have an opportunity at Sports Illustrated Player of the Week versus Stanford and John Elway as we beat them 35-31. So, it, yeah, those, those kind of things as football career-wise, that, that's where it kind of started and took off for myself. And then having a uh, having an opportunity to have what they call a, a drink of coffee in the NFL, one year with Detroit and one year with Indianapolis, and had an opportunity to play uh, four and a half years in the CFL, and had an opportunity to coach another uh, nine years in the Canadian Football League. That's a great career. Like, congratulations. And like you said, your your playing career opened the door for what you do today. So we want to thank you for, for calling in, Tim. I know you're a busy, a busy guy with a busy schedule. If people do want to find out more about Tim Kears, where could they go, Tim? Uh, they can go to tknextlevel at gmail.com and also uh, Faster Kears. Uh, I do a speed program, so it's Faster Kears on Facebook. And, uh, yeah, that site is up and going. And uh, look forward to doing other things. And we look forward to probably setting up and doing some things with disability youth from a sporting end, right? So all my sports background, we're looking to try to set something and get something going where it would be dealing with the youth and all and any youth that have any physical or mental disabilities. Whoa. You know, we're looking to do those things. If we can support in any way, Tim, maybe we can even talk off the air because yeah, we lo- we love our sports here. We love our persons with disabilities. Everybody has abilities, and our 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 job is to showcase them. So if we can ever Absolutely. give any any support to you or your your projects or your organization, your high school, your Calgary Colts. Good luck with them. Please do not hesitate to ask again. We really thank you for taking the time to call in today, Tim. Thank you, Jay. Really appreciate it. I'd like to also send a shout out and thank my buddy, uh, good buddy Mark Marion, who was able to connect myself and you, and really appreciate that. I always want to thank people when they give an opportunity for me to have this opportunity that came from somebody else. It wasn't me that made it happen. So I really appreciate that. Thanks, Tim, again. Have yourself a wonderful weekend, and I'm sure we'll be talking soon. Thank you, Jay. Really appreciate it. Bye-bye now. Bye for now. Alrighty, that was ex-NFLer slash CFLer Tim Kears. He's a special needs instructor, along with being assistant head coach for the Calgary Colts. This is what we're all about here in uh, TV land on TVC is we're, we're not all about who shoots, who scores, who's injured, who's leading the standings. Of course, that's a big part of what we do, but we like to delve right into it and just get personable one-on-one with ex-athletes and see what they're doing today and see, because of the great opportunity they've had in their past career, just to see how they're giving back. And there's a perfect example of what Tim is doing. He's working with the special needs kids out in Calgary. So way to go, Tim. If we can ever be of any uh, additional support, please do not hesitate. Again, join us on Facebook. We're live right now. Do leave your comment or questions. We'll be sure to get back to you. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to change course here. We're going to do some hockey. We're going to come back with our hockey analyst, Miko. So stay, do stay tuned. Grab yourself a drink. And we'll be back in about uh, 30 seconds with hockey analyst Miko on the line. Thanks again. Stay tuned. courtesy of Tim Kearse, ex-NFLer, CFLer, and now a, a special needs instructor. So again, we want to thank Tim calling in from Calgary. Wonderful conversation. Do check him out. He's had a quite an extensive career. So again, thanks, Tim, for calling in today. We're going to change course right now. We're going to go right into the NHL and talk to our sports hockey analyst, Miko. He's on the line right now. Miko, thanks for calling in. Thank you for having me again. Uh, what an honor. So let's talk. Now let's talk hockey. Let's talk Leafs. Let's talk the last two games. Give me your give me your analysis and all this jump in. Well, the last two games have been huge, huge, huge wins for the Leafs. Uh, the last three even um, have been huge wins. Six of a total six points, which is amazing. Um, last night the team 
Lightning um, had some injuries. Eric Fair played one game and now is out for the rest of the season with a broken finger. Um, I no one knew until after the game. Also, Levo chipped in in his first game out of the press box. Morgan Riley was just dominant on defense last night. The whole team it was a team effort. Brian Boyle really settled them down. Said, "Guys, you cannot panic. You have to go at a slower pace, slow things down." And what a veteran presence he is. Where do you think? Uh, why do you think Levo has been on a sideline? Like every time he's in the lineup, he scores. Was he hurt, or or did they just? Just sort of, you know, he's got to take a turn on the bench. It's not even on the bench. It's up in the press box. And, yeah, Babs has said he's a good player. He's surprised everyone and surpassed uh, Rowan Polak. And the reason Levo's in and Marchenko got in last night is because Rowan Polak took that stupid penalty uh, uh, against... Um, yeah, the boarding penalty against Tampa yeah, or whatever it was. Or... for a handful of games. Um... I think he's really just shot himself in the foot there because I think that uh, he that's, he's just proven that he's not you know disciplined enough to play in the NHL and follow their rules. And next season he's not going to get a contract. I think he may have to go overseas to Europe somewhere. So let me. I don't think he's getting an NHL or AHL contract next year. Let me ask you this now. I mean, it's kind of hard to pick apart the, te- the team in the last nine games because they're 7 1 and 1. So, like, even watching the last, I guess, really since they took the beating from Florida, I think what they lose, 7 1 or 5 1 or I don't know what it was. But since that game, they've really been able to put it together. So, if you had to pick them apart over the last two games, what would you what would you say like if you had to say well you know pick pick them pick them apart what would you say I don't know. Um, their defense still needs to get better. The Jake Gardner is making mistakes that could cost the team a goal. He needs to figure out what he's doing wrong and stop doing it. That's the one criticism I have. Rowan Pollock taking that stupid penalty put his team at risk. Those are the two players that I'm really calling out because. They are just letting the team down with their poor play. How do you think uh, McElhenney bounced back after that first goal? I think he did amazing. He just became like Anderson and became the brick wall that no one can get the puck past. I, I, I have I have to agree with all those analyses. Like it's kind of like like if you're a Leaf fan right now, there's not much negative you can really say. So let's let's look forward into our crystal ball and let's go through. I'm going to go through the lines, and you tell me who's going to be here in the summer and who's not. Like, who, this okay. is just this is just our opinion, right? So let's go through the first line. Now you know who the first line is. I'm not going to go through the players' names, but out of the first line, um, are all those three guys going to be here in October? Yes. Okay. Second line. So let's give a little bit of uh, uh, info for the second line. So it'll be Kadri. Um, Brown and Komarov are those going to be? Are those guys going to be there? Whether you want to call it the second line or third line, uh, what you know? Second line and first line are all going to be back next season. Okay, third line, which would be Matthews, Nylander, and Hyman, is that going to be intact? Yes. Okay, the fourth line would be Boyle, Martin, and either Soshnikov or say Levo. Uh, Levo, I think, is going to stay. Sarge is going to stay, and Boyle's going to stay. The other player, I don't think, is going to stay. Okay, let's go back on defense now. So, looking at the defense, do you think the Leafs are going to pick up a Shattenkirk type of player? I'm hoping they can get Shattenkirk. I'm hoping, because they've got $25 million, they could sign, um, two huge players with $25 million. We could sign both Shattenkirk and Tabari. So let's do this then. For next time when you come on the show, research who are the available stud defensemen come free agency. Like, is there anybody close to Shattenkirk, which I, I kind of don't no, think there is? No, there's not. There's not. There's not, two yeah. Stud players. There's only two stud players from the whole list of free agents, and that is Kevin Shattenkirk and Johnny Tabari. Yeah, I think Shattenkirk's a step above him. Well, here's the thing, like, one's a forward, 
bunch of defense. You can't compare them. Also, you got guys like Steve Ott, P. A. Parento, and Thomas Bennett that are free agents. They're not studs. They're not good at all. We, we, don't, we got be- we got better guys like that on our team right now. So do you think? So you? I think. See, for me, I think in the summer months, I think if we pick up a Shattenkirk, team him with Morgan Riley. We moved down Jake Gardner with Zaitsev. That's four pretty good defensemen. I like Marshenko to keep him. I like Connor Carrick to keep him. I think. No, um, here's the thing with the line. Uh, Babs and Shannon have both said they really like what Boyle's doing and they're going to re sign him. Not for Max contract, obviously, because he's not that player. Yeah. But they're also very keen on someone who's very good at the face off, and that is Ben Smith. I think they're very. Uh, oh, I think Ben. I think Ben Smith is. I think Ben Smith is like Bob Froze. He was good for. He was good while we needed him, but we're we're a step above. Like I think. I think the Leafs are going to do this in the summer, and I think they're going to go to the Cup next year and win the Cup if they do this. I think if they grab themselves a stud defenseman like Shattenkirk, right, and yeah. if they package up either either. A Bozak, a JVR, a Komarov. I think those three Leafs are going to be on the bubble. I think the fourth line could change because the fourth line, right? So, I mean, Matt Martin we signed, so I believe he's staying here. I don't know if Brian Boyle's going to stay because his family is from Florida. They're from Tampa, his wife. I'm not too sure if he's going to want to stay here, but... I mean, he might love it. I don't know. I, I don't know. You, we'll have to see. It's, and it's Soshnikov. I think Soshnikov cannot be on the fourth line next year. He either has to move up or he's not going to be on the team because he he's better than a fourth line winger, but he's got to prove it. And that's that's the catch-22. When do you prove it if you don't get an opportunity? Well, like, like we both said, there's two players that, in my mind, are going to make the leap from uh, from AHL to NHL next year, and that is Kasperi Kapanen and Kirby Reichel. Yeah, I, I have to agree with that. I think both those guys are going to be on the team next year. So it's, I mean, it's a good, it's a great problem to have for Babcock. Let's uh, let's move it along a little bit. And what do you think is Montreal going to hang on to their leaders? Ottawa or even the Leafs going to overpass them? I think. The Leafs are not going to pass Ottawa or Montreal. I just don't see it happening. Um, I think they're going to stay right where they are right until the very end of the season and into the playoffs. I think that's where they're going to end up. And who's going to be our now. who's going to be our matchup? Columbus? Uh, either Columbus or Ottawa, they're saying. Oh, I hope it's Ottawa because you know we have their number. I'm a little scared of Columbus because they're such a big, big, heavy team. But we played well yeah, against them. injured now because uh, the, the game we played against the Leafs, because Komarov and uh, and um, uh, Roman Polak pretty much took two of their players' heads off. So they're riddled with injuries. Yeah, that was a bad. They're going to be able to continue this pace that they're on. I really think they aren't, and they're going to. I think they're going to crash and burn. The, First from the playoffs. That game against Columbus, they, they, some of those hits were pretty iffy. Like there must have been three or four hits that were like, wow, they're pretty. They could have been pretty scary hits. And the thing that I have to give props to Uncle Leo, Leo Komarov, <laughs> as soon as he saw Nick Bellingo was injured, he motioned over the ref like, "This guy's injured. You guys need to get on the ice and help him." Yeah, I think Leo. Was, I think for that. I have to commend that. That was true sportsmanship in my eyes. I like Uncle Leo, so... Well, Miko, I really I really thank you for, for tune, uh, calling in today. And before I let you go, I just want to tell our viewers that uh, you're going to be seeing Miko on our set. He's going to be uh, coming on in an upcoming show. We're going to be uh, introducing more of Miko as the time goes along. He sure does know his hockey. He's a great guy, so please leave our comments on Facebook. Um, he just breathes and lives hockey 24-7. So, Miko, I really thank you for taking the time to call in today. And like I said, we're going to be seeing you on the set very soon. Okay, uh, just let me know when you want me to come out, because I know you said you're not doing a show next Friday. No, next Friday we're doing a couple other shows, so we will talk. But again, I'll let you know off the air. But again, for people out there on Facebook, 
Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching, Miko. We really thank you for, uh, for tuning in, and we'll, we'll just catch you next time. Okay, thank you for having me. Thank Bye. you, Miko. Bye-bye. All right, that was our hockey analyst, Miko. We just talked about the Leafs' run the last two games. Well, actually, the last nine games. They've really put themselves in a great position to succeed. They needed to step up. They did. The coach has them firing all cylinders right now. It's almost hard to pick the team apart. Um, four, they got four lines rolling. They're playing ex uh, extremely good defensive hockey. Their defense have seemed to step it up. And Anderson has come up big big because we really needed to, uh, to for him to shine and he has so if you're a Leaf fan you must be all giddy I think they have nine games left uh, coming up so and get ready for the playoffs as the Leafs do do make it into the playoffs which I believe they will the city is going to be on fire so I want to thank everybody for tuning in again you can check us out on Roku TV it's a free worldwide subscription you can also check us out on Comcast Public Access down in the States. Our channel is going to be spreading across North America. We have the support from our community. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Uh, we will be uh, unleashing our new ex fully accessible website very soon along with our theme song called Shining Light. We're also having an event come up on May 17th along with some very exciting events throughout the summer. So we do wish you join us. Please inquire. You can go to our website, www.thedisabilitychannel.ca. I want to thank American Standard for being one of our leading sponsors. For what American Standard, I want to just mention something about American Standard. They have taken a chance on our channel. They believe in us. They support us. They're our sponsor. And... The budgets go to, like you said, like you seen earlier with the Knicks show. We have a new show coming up after my show called JP in the City. Now we're just getting the legs on that show. He's a dynamic personality. You might know JP. He ran for the mayor, I believe in 2010. Now I might be getting that wrong, but I, but I believe I'm correct. Just a, a king size personality, a very uh, kind gentleman. So after my show, do stay tuned on Facebook as we're going to be introducing a new show called JP in the City. It's all about what's going on. It could be whether it's politics, uh, new updates regarding tolls, the roads, um, goods and services in Toronto, a little bit of JP personality. It's going to be a very dynamic show. So I hope you do tune in. Do leave your comments for him as he's a wonderful man. And I want to thank you for tuning in today for Sidelines with Stoyan. I'm your host, Stoyan. Do leave comments because we're all about sports. Whether you like the Leafs, hate the Leafs, like the Canadians, hate the Canadians. We don't pick favorites here. We just get the truth out. Again, I'm Sidelines with Stoyan. We'll see you next time.